Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and today I'm back again for another race vlog. So today we are going to be competing in the Mazda MX-5 Clubman series once again with Misty Racing. This time it is the season finale at Brands Hatch Indie Circuit. As you can see in the background, it was a little bit wet on the race day. But nevertheless so, we're going to see how it gets on then and hopefully we can have a good end to the year. So let's just jump straight into it then and see how the day went then. Yo what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're here at Brands Hatch Circuit as you can see. Um, so yeah, this weekend is the season finale of the Mazda MX-5 Clubman series. Um, so we're racing around the Brands Hatch Indie Circuit this weekend. Just finished testing and this is how that went. So here we go for testing then. First session, we were first out early in the morning at 9 o'clock um, and the track was a little bit greasy just for the fact that it had rained the day before. Um, so it was a little bit slidey and we just had to watch out for that. My main concern in the rear wheel drive MX-5s was Paddock Hill Bend just for the fact that obviously it kind of drops down quite aggressively and I was worried about spinning off um, obviously with rear wheel drive and how slidey the MX-5 can be. Uh, luckily, that didn't really happen to be honest. I had a pretty good session and a pretty good test day. I managed to just keep it consistent. Started off pretty slow. As you see, my lines were massively off to start with. Just trying to find out where uh, I could push it a bit more and how I could gain more time. As you can see, I was catch up to a group of cars just ahead. So as you can see, I sort of tried to use them as a bit of a buffer and see where I can gain time with them. But yeah, nevertheless, I carried on pushing on, and at some point, I did actually get dropped by them a little bit, so that just kind of shows where we are at the moment, and what I have to try and work on. I feel like my main point is I need to be a lot more confident in into Paddock Hill Bend, um, just because I'm a little too early on the brakes, but as we come out of Druids then, you can just see how slidey it was on Session 1 there, as we get a little bit of oversteer, but nevertheless, managed to catch it, and that is the end of our Session 1. Um, so yeah, not too bad, definitely need to make a few setup changes and make a few adjustments to my driving style and see what we can do for session 2 then basically. So what we did is we added a couple clicks onto the rear to make it a little bit soft on the rear and that actually gave me a lot more grip and as you can see we're actually going to be using the visor cam for this session. Um, I haven't actually really used my visor cam a lot this year um, in the racing mainly because I'm not actually allowed to use it in official race days. I'm allowed to use it in test days and track days so that's what I kind of do. Um, so nevertheless, so this is the test day, so I thought, you know what, let's just use it for a couple sessions. And yeah, not gonna lie, it is a very interesting camera to see. And it's actually the first time I'm using the camera angle in the MX-5. So, just making our way towards the uh, the pit lane then. Um, we have to go into this little tunnel at Brands Hatch, which is quite fun actually. So, I thought I'd add all this in just to show where we were kind of spaced in the paddock. And where we had to go to get to the actual track. But nevertheless, so managed to make it to the garage to head out onto the track for our second session then. Um, and obviously with the setup changes, I was looking to try and adjust my driving style to it. And yeah, it definitely helped a lot more and I felt a lot more confident on the brakes in the paddock. And felt just a lot more confident overall with the car. Um, and you'll see that as we head on into this session, coming out in towards paddock for the first time then. And we're going to cut onto a couple laps later. As you see, we catch up to someone just ahead of us here. And you can just see how much more confident I am on the accelerator coming out of that final corner. That was another corner I really struggled with because I just did not know the line. It was very weird, especially when it got a little bit more wetter in the race day. But nevertheless, so coming into Paddock Hill Bend then, and we just break a lot later than the guy ahead of us, as you can see, and try and get on the power a little bit more earlier. And the car just hooks up very nicely, as you can see, get a little bit of a slipstream, and we're going to try and send it down the inside of him, heel toe down the third, and down the inside we go of him, and another guy goes wide there, so we just get past him. I think he was trying to stay out of our way there. Um, so yeah, that just shows how much more confident I was getting in the car. And this is another corner, like Graham Hill Bend, because I found the car was quite twitchy sometimes. Uh, with the setup changes, it was a lot more better. Um, but I really like the fact that you really got to watch out on the exit on that one to not track limits and obviously slide. And Surtees as well is another amazing corner, sort of just a little bit of a lift, but keep the full one as much as you can really. Um, and yeah, as you can see, a lot more committed through there, which was very nice. Um, that was actually one point that Alistair, my teammate in the team who's in the Super Cup series, so the Mark 3s, 
um, he actually gave me advice on that. He said just completely run that curb and it will handle it and you'll be able to break a lot more later into that final corner. And it worked very nicely actually coming into the second, third and fourth session um, because I just felt a lot more confident doing it. I was a little worried at first because I thought that the curb would make the back end go. But actually it gave me a lot more grip which I was surprised about. Uh, but nevertheless, into Druids, once again, breaking a lot more later than the guy ahead of me. And that was another point that Alistair made. He said, break a lot later, but hard on the brakes. He said, because I was being a little bit too soft on the brakes. And it was working very nice, as you can see, get a very good exit out of Graham Hill Ben. And just go right down the inside, into all 30s of this guy on my right, who is the 66 car. Run the curve very nicely, once again, up towards the final corner. And just hill toe down a third very nicely. And coming around the final corner then. And you could just see how much more confident I was to be honest in the car and I was quite glad I used the helmet camera for this session because this one was probably the best one out of all of them. As we head down Paddock Hill Bend once again very nicely running the curb on the exit. As we head down towards Druids hill towing down to third once again and you could just see how much later I was on the brakes there compared to the others. But yeah for sure after the setup changes and after getting a little bit more confidence in the car. Um, I felt a lot more better and just looked a lot more quicker which I was kind of worried about because obviously they forecast rain on the race day so I thought all the practice that I'm doing today is basically going to go to waste but obviously we just have to deal with what we can and deal with what we got so nevertheless so come around the final corner once again trying to catch a car in front of me sort of using him as a bit of a, uh, a slipstream really and also a little bit of trying to learn where the lines are because there was still a lot of people faster than me on this day um, even though I was making some diabolical sends just like this one a bit um, I still had a lot of people that were a lot faster so I was trying to use them to sort of follow them and see where they were braking where they were accelerating where they were gear changing everything really I just wanted to try and gain as much knowledge as possible um, I really gear change up to fourth really late there on the start from the straight um, but I just found that was best for me but nevertheless, that is the end of our test day here at Brands Hatch in the MX-5. So I will catch back up with you guys on the day and give you a quick rundown of how testing went then. So yeah, testing was pretty good. Had a couple of little moments, but nevertheless, it was pretty decent. Um, to be honest, just looking at the view, Paddock Hill Bend is absolutely insane. I like, honestly love this circuit. Probably my most favourite circuit in the UK, to be honest. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Um, yeah, testing found pace at the beginning was a little bit a bit, little bit lacking of confidence especially through paddock hill um but nevertheless managed to progress a little bit and get a little bit higher up as the day went on and as you saw made some pretty decent overtakes keeping up with people found a lot more pace so yeah i guess that is the end of our test day and we'll get ready for race day tomorrow let's jump straight into it then the next day so boys it's a, a little bit wet today um no cloud is going to go. It says it's going to probably dry up a little bit in the races, maybe. Hopefully, that'll be nice. But qualifying, <laughs> it's definitely going to be wet. Um, just seen the pace car going around, doing some laps, and it is flooded. <laughs> so, yeah, qualifying, going to be interesting. But, I don't know, I guess we'll see how it goes. I am absolutely knackered as well. Um, didn't get much sleep last night, but we keep rolling. Let's jump straight into qualifying, boys. Okay, here we go then. <laughs> Full wet conditions at Brian's Hatch in an MX-5 in qualifying. No clue how it's going to go. Don't really know about the setup. Done no practice. We're just going to have to go into this hoping for the best. So yeah, head out on track. Straight away, I knew it was going to be difficult because the spray is just absolutely insane. Um, I don't know any wet lines around here. I was sort of trying to use the cars again, just like in testing, as sort of like a buffer of how to take the track. So yeah, I knew it was going to be a very interesting one to say the least, um, and also with my record of racing the wet, I've never been good in the wet, so I just have to try and like black my way into this qualifying session and hope for the best. Um, nevertheless though, I wasn't actually the slowest, I was pretty happy with my pace, I actually found that I wasn't too bad as we get a massive crack of oversteer as we just slide nearly off the track onto the kerb. Um, as we go down the inside, there was actually grip on the inside here, which was I was quite shocked about. Because, as you can see, the guys on the outside obviously took the wet line, but I actually managed to find a bit of grip. Um, even on taking a wet line, it was still slidey, so it, it didn't really matter. Um, coming into Druids, once again, hill towing down a third. Try to take a bit of a wet line down here, um, and just see what I can do. As you can see, someone sends it down inside of me. And on the exit, he gets on the power too early, loses the back end, and nearly spins off. He just catches it, I see in my mirrors. Um, so yeah, I managed to get back around him after he tried to move. 
and you could just see by Graham Hill Bend there how much standing water is on the apex. So yeah, it's a it's a very difficult one to say the least. I have my windscreen wipers on full blast at this point, trying to just find grip and just see out of my windshield. Um, up here, I actually felt the most confident in the wet, which I was quite shocked about because I don't know why. I just felt like this corner I can handle it a bit better in the wet than what I could in the dry. As you see, getting a bit of uh, tail happy on the exit and just being a bit gentle on the floor because I did not want to lose the back end and go into the barrier. Um, coming down the start finish straight once again then, and as you can see we managed to catch up with another car, uh, just an orange one just in front of us as we send it down the inside of him, he'll toe down to third, and surprisingly there is actually grip on the racing line, um, well the dry line I should say, which I was shocked about, um, because usually obviously it's wet line and a dry line depending on the conditions, um, but there was actually grip on the racing line which I was quite happy with, so I feel like that's why I kind of didn't do as badly as I thought I would because usually I'm just taking the normal racing line and most tracks are just destroys your time trying to take the racing line but nevertheless so I was still taking some wet lines I was still trying to follow people but it was just so difficult to see where they're braking where they're turning in and at this point there is actually a red flag because so many people kept going off mainly through certies um, so obviously at this point I back off and obviously we got to come back into the pits so yeah, it was a bit of an interesting session, a lot of people went off, um, a lot of yellow flags and obviously a red flag. So yeah, I guess we'll just have to come into the pits, there is about 3 minutes remaining so we just have to get ready for that. At this point I find out from my team that I'm actually currently in P22 out of 34, which isn't too bad but I knew I could do better. So on the restart, obviously 3 minutes ago, we would have probably about 2, maybe 3 out of push laps to go. Um, so coming out of the pits, unfortunately my onboard camera dies as you can see, um, so thank you to Lewis Thomas Media who actually supplied some trackside footage. As you see we managed to go back out and actually managed to push very well and actually managed to push ourselves up from P22 up to P16 on literal the final lap of my qualifying session. I saw I crossed the line with 7 seconds ago and on that last lap I managed to just get up to P16 even though I got stuck in a little bit of traffic coming up 30s. Um, but I knew it was going to be a quick lap because I was a little bit of behind them and I managed to just catch up to them coming through 30s and even though I got blocked up it still got me to P16 out of 34 so I'll definitely take that especially with my performances in the wet um, and just showing how epic these trackside footages are. Um, definitely check out Lewis Thomas Media does epic work like this and if you want work like this done for yourself in your own racing then make sure to get in contact with him because he does epic work like this. Um, but yeah, that is the end of our qualifying session as we head back into the pits. So, qualifying over and done with here at Vans Hatch. Um, absolutely incredible to be honest. Not very good in the wet, but it was a laugh to say the least. I'm not too sure why I qualified, but nevertheless, I had a lot of fun. Setup feels amazing to be fair. So hopefully, we'll do just as well in race one and hopefully it'll dry up a little bit. Let's see how it goes. So boys, just got confirmation. We are P16, which isn't too bad, out of 34. Um, I was P22 just before we went out again after the red flag. Um, I managed to get P16 somehow. It was actually the final, final lap of my qualifying session as well that managed to get us there. Um, I knew it was a quick one because I just absolutely sent it, to be honest. I just thought, you know what, let's see what we can do. Race. Well, it looks like it's it's still going to be wet, which is a, a bit annoying. Look, there's a little, there's a little one, um, which is a bit annoying because I wanted it to be dry. But here we are. You know, we'll see how it goes. So let's get ready for race one, boys. Let's do this. So race one, then, as you can see, it's a little bit more drier. Um, it's not completely dry and it's not completely wet. It's sort of damp sort of mixture conditions. Um, nevertheless so we pull away as you can see massive tail happy cars ahead of me. Um, this is the green flag lap trying to get some warmth in the tyres and just seeing what the start will be like. Uh, but nevertheless so pulling up to the grid then getting ready for the race start then for race one in the Mazda MX-5 Downforce Radio Clubman race and it is lights out and away we go here massive slide on the exit. As you can see we flick up to fourth by mistake here. I was meant to go in a second and I just completely missed second and went straight to fourth by mistake. Uh, but nevertheless I quickly recover from that and go back down a second and back up to third. Um, so yeah unfortunately we lost a couple positions on the start but nevertheless so I'm still looking to try and make those positions back and try and make progress in this race. As we head in towards Druids then I flick the windscreen wipers back on, flick down to third. As you see try and go around the outside of two cars there in towards Druids. We're going to have to try and get this guy on the exit but taking a wet line as you can see worked clearly because now we have the inside for Graham Hill Bend as we head down towards Graham Hill Bend down the inside and made 
made the move stick back on him. So I think at this point we managed to make our positions back because I think we lost two and now we've gained two back. But nevertheless so I'm still not looking to finish there. I want to still progress up. In towards 30s as we go then, and as you can see a few people go a bit wide there and slide nearly off track. One person actually does slide off track, and then that same guy that goes off track actually ends up spinning towards final corner. Luckily I head for the outside, and he actually collects a guy that goes around the outside. Unfortunately, I lose a position in that scuffle, but nevertheless I made two up, so I can't complain too much. And I know I'm quicker than this guy just ahead, so I just got to try and get back around him. As he head down the start from the straight, I decide to tuck in towards the slipstream with him. As you see, he has a little bit more straight line speed from the exit than me and he sort of gives me a hand just in front there to try and say let's work together so I sort of try and use that as a benefit because I usually find I'm better at following people than um, defending off people so that's what I sort of did I tried to follow him as you see I sort of take a bit of a wet line compared to him and try and go a little bit wider as you see he goes quite defensive there I wasn't looking to attack him really after he gave me the hand signal I wanted to try and work together just like he said um, but I guess he didn't really know that at the time so he was trying to defend but nevertheless so I sort of take a dry racing line into there and actually works very nicely and he sort of does give me a hand signal once again to say come on work together and I was trying to work together like I said I didn't want to attack him that's why I didn't try and go the inside down towards 30s as you see very tail happy through 30s and up the hill and someone's actually gone off there so we try and go around the outside of him and try and take a bit of a wet line and you can just see the wet line works very nicely here through the final corner because I managed to get on the power a lot more better than him even though I get a bit of a slide on the exit it still works very nicely as we flick up to fourth down the stop and a straight once again then so we'll continue to push on then as we head into the next lap as you can see I have got a bit of a gap between me and the car ahead now and I kind of got to defend a little bit because I have got someone right on my tail here so I do need to watch out for that um, as you can see still trying to catch up with the guys ahead because I want to make more progress I don't want to just leave it here as you see I managed to catch up with another guy uh, just ahead of me as you see he was a little bit more later on the brakes than me into paddock which I definitely have to learn I feel like following people like I said in testing and also qualifying will help me out massively so that's what I was trying to do but as you can see in towards druids then he actually goes for a move down the inside of someone I sort of did make like a little half hard look but I definitely wasn't going to go for it not from that far back and unfortunately I didn't get the best of exits of druids and someone actually gets around the outside of me here I do sort of try and keep it down the inside but as you see he takes a bit of a wet line manages to be a little bit later on the brakes and get a better exit so unfortunately he did get past me but obviously this could be a good thing because now I could try and use him as my buffer to try follow um, nevertheless heading up towards 30s once again um, running the curb just a little bit there not as much as what I was in the dry obviously don't want to lose a back end as we head in towards final corner taking a wet line here going as wide as possible and as you see the blue car is absolutely flying his setup must be absolutely incredible because he manages to get on the power very nicely and look what happens when I try and get on the power like that I just slide all over the place um, but nevertheless so I'm still looking to attack I know that I could be quicker than this turquoise car just ahead of me so I will try and attack him as much as possible and see if I can do a little bit better and get past him eventually but something really interesting happens on the exit of paddock here the guy that was in the blue car that got around absolutely spins off there I go the inside the other guy goes outside and collects him and that is a massive shame there for both cars who get tangled up in that collision because one of them spun off so that is a massive crash there and luckily both cars were alright as you can see we come around the next lap and there's still only yellow flags there which is very dangerous because there's a freaking bumper in the middle of the track um, eventually they do bring out the safety car so obviously everyone slows down and gets behind the safety car but like I said thankfully both drivers were okay and both got out okay there is an ambulance on track as you can see as we come around behind the safety car very slowly um, but both drivers were okay and I actually left a comment on the guy who actually ended up in the barriers post um, because he actually posted about it the day after um, and he was okay so that's good to hear but eventually it was red flag so we do have to come to a stop on the start finish straight um, and unfortunately once again my camera actually ends up dying after this point so thankfully once again we're gonna turn to the live stream footage and actually see the restart here as it is lights out and away we go here and something very interesting happens and I'm gonna let you listen to the commentary's reaction to this. 
on this drama further back involving Bateman. It's Bateman. And he's got damage. Damage to the right rear corner. Paul Bateman, the championship leader, perhaps destined for a third non-score of the season. This could change everything. Where is Greensmith? He is fine. Greensmith is through. There's more sideways action down the hill, but Bateman Scott is out. Yeah, Bateman has rear suspension damage. He got caught up in the mix and said that's the one thing they couldn't get involved Ooh. in as Ollie Walden gets sideways out wide. That's the one thing you couldn't oh, do no. and get in trouble. Round goes one of the Misty Racing cars. That's car 12, Reese March up at Druids. It's all kicking off on this restart. We said it would be a dash for the cash. So, yeah, unfortunately, we got absolutely tangled up in towards Druids. The black car just behind me gives me a little nudge on the rear, and that was enough to spin me around because there was no grip through Druids on that restart. So, unfortunately, we dropped down a P26, but luckily, I managed to claw back as much as I could and overtake a few cars, and through a little lucky moment from others spinning, I managed to finish race one in P20, unfortunately. Massive shame, but that's racing, I guess. So, boys, race one over and done with. Pretty decent race. Um, we started off well, had a bit of wheel spin at the start, flicked up the fourth by mistake, which was not good, but we recovered well, got up to P13. Red flag after a bit of an incident, as you saw with the ambulance on track. Um, so yeah, hopefully race two goes a bit better. Did get punted off in race one, but it is what it is. We just have to basically move forward, see what happens, finish P20 overall um, in the first race after that little accident. But yeah, let's see how it goes then, boys. And it's dry. So yeah, let's do this, boys. Race two. So here we go for race two then, getting all kitted up, getting my helm on. As you can see, thank you to Lewis once again for supplying some off-track footage as well as on-track. Um, so yeah, nevertheless, so it was going to be an interesting one. Obviously bone dry, like I said. So hopefully this one will be a little bit better. Unfortunately, something big happens in this one. So as we're leaving the pit lane and getting gridded up, unfortunately my camera actually dies for on board. So this is going to be a bit of a different one to edit because obviously I got to try and add some trackside footage, obviously from the stream and obviously from Lewis and obviously from my granddad as well recording on his phone. So yeah, I'm going to try my best to commentate over this with the stream. Nevertheless, so it is lights out and away we go here for the season finale of the MX5 Downforce Radio Clubman Championship. Uh, we got a pretty decent start, not going to lie. Didn't miss any gears this time. Uh, went straight up to second, straight up to third and up to fourth just before we head into Paddock. Um, yeah, coming in towards Paddock then, did actually make a couple positions off the line, which is quite decent to say the least. As we head in towards Druids then for the first time, it's kind of difficult to see me, but I am in the background. Um, and you'll see as we come around Druids, I'm going to go around the outside of someone here, uh, which is Matt in the pink and black car. And then we're going to have the inside line for Graham Hill Bend, which is very nice to say the least. So yeah, making good progress at the moment, but nevertheless, I'm not done there. I want to try and fight up to pretty much where I was in race one before I got taken out, as we're heading the slipstream of the orange car then just ahead of me as we head up towards 30s. Um, I do sort of try and make a half-hearted look down inside, but I knew I wasn't going to go for it. But on the entrance in towards the final corner, we actually do send it on him and actually make a move on him, which was very decent to say the least. And obviously another position we made up, which I'm not going to complain about whatsoever. I'm not going to allow us on a bit of a comeback drive after our race one finish, um, as we send it down inside in towards Graham Hill Bend on another car. Now we uh, got a bit of a gap between me and the group ahead. But we got one more car just in front of us, so let's see if we can try and get him there. So next is the black and orange car just ahead of me there. I'm going to try and chase him down as much as possible as we've got a bit of a slow motion shot here. But I do have to watch out because the blue car just behind me, the number 20, is catching me down. So I do need to watch out for that. But as we head in towards Druid once again the next lap, and we absolutely send it down the inside of the black and orange car there. And make a move stick very nicely on him. So that's another position made. Um, and then we'll cut onto a couple laps later where we actually catch up to another car here and just get past him it was a bit of a lap car there so i can't complain too much as he got out of the way of us um as we head in towards graham hill bend once again but i am getting chased down by the blue and white car just behind me here so unfortunately we ran into a bit of a problem then as you can see from the slow motion clip coming down paddock uh, our bonnet clip actually snapped off or one of them did um, I thought at this point, just absolutely send it, just keep it going, hopefully the other one holds on, which luckily it did. Unfortunately, this also happened though. Dawkins on the inside line will go through, so up, one down, one for Greensmith, who now needs to try and close the door. Oh. Off goes the 22 car. That's 72, Steve Kite. Oh, sorry, 72, yes, looks a bit like a two, but yes, you're right, he's well <laughs> off into the gravel trap at, at uh, Paddock Hill Bend. So, unfortunately, my teammate Steve, and also the team owner of Misty Racing, actually went off at Paddock Hill Bend, all because of me. Um, I made a little bit of contact with him, which was a massive shame and a massive mistake on my part and a way too ambitious overtake or attempt. 
Um, so yeah, unfortunately after that, a safety car came out and we just carry on and slowly bring our way and nurse the car basically after that incident, just in case there was any damage, and also because of the bonnet, so I stopped running the curves as much and sort of backed off a little bit, and we actually come home in P13, which is a bit of a shame as it could have been a lot better result, but nevertheless, it is what it is. Uh, massive apologies to Steve and Misty Racing for that contact. It was completely my fault and I shouldn't have tried uh, such ambitious overtake on him and try and fight him so hard either as it was my teammate. But nevertheless, that is the end of race two then. I guess I will cut back to you guys on the day then. So boys, um, not the best of days to be honest. Bit of a tricky day. Um, race two just finished. I don't even know where we finish. I probably got a penalty because obviously that contact with Steve, if you may have saw, I don't even know what footage recorded because I saw the camera died. So yeah, um, apologies to Steve and Misty Racing for that. I was an idiot and just tried a over, over, uh, over the top move, let's just say that. So yeah, um, I guess that rounds off our weekend here at Brands Hat Show. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe. But thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.